Good evening everybody and once again welcome back to the video. In this entire playlist I'll be teaching you how to design a data platform on AWS. Yes that's right how to design a data platform. So I'll be teaching you the skills that are needed on how to design a platform that can enable user to or users or data engineers to ingest data uh, into a transactional data like such as Apache Hoodie. Here in this video, you're gonna learn crucial skills such as A, how do you schedule job? How, how can I dynamically build a scheduler on AWS, right? We'll be using EventBridge for that. Then we're gonna use some sort of a, a database to store the job metadata. In this case, it's gonna be DynamoDB. And then we also need an ability to retry jobs when it fails. We also need an ability to manually fire jobs and we wanna completely automate the infrastructure component. I'll be showing you how to design all of that uh, in the entire playlist. So I'll be going in phases and parts in the video. This is gonna be the first part where we have a requirement or we wanna design a platform that allows to ingest data from the raw zone into the silver zone, right? Uh, that is Apache Hoodie Transactional Data Lake. We wanna automate the complete process, scheduling, manually firing jobs, retry, everything. So let's take a look at the solution. Uh, again, uh, you can also swap the glue with the EMR, but this is a, I'm gonna teach you how to build a platform now. All right, so that being said, now this is the first video where I'm just gonna talk about the, the, the design and then next couple of videos, we'll write some basic codes, do some brainstorming and then keep this guy rolling, right? So uh, we have data in the raw zone and we need an ability to ingest the data into a Hodge transactional data lake. So the goal is from raw to silver, we wanna have a complete automated process. We wanna schedule items, uh, we wanna retry items that fail, we wanna send notification, everything. How do I design this, right? So let's start with the first thing. The first thing is uh, we wanna create a job, right? So the job will tell us who created the job, when do you wanna schedule this, and all the important job parameters, such as the input path on the S3, right? The output path that, that the transactional data like should be created, right? And any transformation uh, that you wanna uh, do on that particular uh, data source, so, uh, a SQL. So these are a couple of job parameters that I can think of that would, be taken by the, the the API, right? Now, once we have all the metadata, which I call job metadata, we're gonna store that in the Amazon DynamoDB. And once we store that in the DynamoDB, we will have a job ID, we'll generate a GUID. Now, once that is done, automatically, so let's say the user said they wanna fire the job in the night, 10 o'clock, automatically a dynamic uh, event bridge rule will be created, which will fire up a predefined Lambda function. Uh, based on certain parameters. So when any time the cron fires up, uh, those parameters are passed into a Lambda. The Lambda will fetch the metadata from DynamoDB and it will essentially fire the glue job with those parameters. Uh, when you create a job, uh, this is gonna also create these infrastructure components. For example, uh, let's say you have an S3 bucket, so automatically it's gonna create an S3 event and an SQSQ and add a policy on there, meaning Anytime new events land into the raw zone, automatically it will be captured into an Amazon SQSQ. So now, as, as you can see, right, this co particular infrastructure component will be b created on the fly. Now, let's uh, take the use case, right? When the cron job fires, right, basically through event bridge rule, uh, those parameters are passed to a Lambda function. Lambda function will query DynamoDB, fetch the job metadata, and then what it's gonna do, it will know uh, like, let's say for example, this is a job for customers, right? It's gonna pass those parameters to a glue job. This is a template. Um, and again, when the glue job is fired, it will essentially pull that particular SQSQ because all the parameters are passed. It will pull the queue, it will read the data as a Spark data frame. And then based on the query that you provided in the, in the, in the DynamoDB, it will perform those transformation on, on those uh, Spark data frame. And then it will perform either upsert, insert, or whatever that is you specified uh, in the job metadata on the Hoodie transactional data lake. Uh, user will also have an ability to fire jobs manually. So anytime you fire up a job, you have to provide a job ID, which will fire up a Lambda function and which will again read the job metadata and fire AWS glue uh, job with those uh, parameters, right? So again, there's a lot to learn here because A, you're gonna learn how to build, you know, backend, right? We will we'll be using uh, Flask Python to uh, create the backend microservice. We'll use Amazon DynamoDB to store the job metadata. We'll write a Lambda function, which will fetch the metadata and, and pass on to the glue job. Now, one thing I wanna uh, tell you guys is uh, this particular glue job that you see, 
you could replace that component with emr as well again that depends upon your company stack if you are heavily invested into glue which makes sense then you know use glue if you are a heavy user of emr then swap that uh, block with uh, amazon emr now the reason i like to use uh, event bridge for scheduling excuse me i think i have a small issue so again the scheduling part you could do it uh, in a various way right i like to use event bridge because all of that is managed by aws right you could also use airflow right to schedule job but in that case i think that does add up a, a cost factor to it because airflow uh, uh, you have to uh, run a managed version of airflow right so that you could use that for scheduling as well but i personally prefer event bridge because i have designed systems in the past uh, through event bridge right so uh, hopefully this framework makes sense uh, you know an api route which will help us to create a job which uh, will uh, you know create this infra infrastructure component on the fly uh, we'll have an api endpoint which will help us to basically fire jobs uh, manually if needed and anything fails we'll receive an email alerts as well and any transformation that you want to provide on that particular data you can provide that uh, transformation during create job parameters as a sql query so that's 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 the goal uh, what we're going to build um so hopefully uh, this this makes sense and this is the first part where i just walked you over the design and in the upcoming next part we will start writing code we will we will start writing uh, components to it like sub particular classes once you have those classes then we will use those classes into a, a flask uh, uh, api we will design a nice backend service to you know do all, all of this magic for us uh, and then we'll write the glue job and then we'll see at the end of the video we'll see how everything works together right uh, as one 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 component so uh, hope you're excited this is the first part right um, again now uh, uh, again depending upon the way you want to ingest you can also like for example you can use glue bookmark also but i want to uh, do uh, this particular route uh, for example a queue based route so for every job it's going to create a queue right and it's going to push all the events into a queue and then i can simply ingest that from the queue anything fails uh, probably will be there in the dead letter queue so probably i can you know uh, see which file was not processed why it was not processed etc cetera, etc cetera, right so this is what we are going to build hopefully uh, this makes sense uh, and um, I'll be seeing you in the part two where we will write some basic code, uh, some classes, and then we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be excited to see you in the part two.